Today we're reopening the Trump cabinet, setting aside the many, many skeletons, and talking about our national security advisor and what you would get if Captain Kangaroo really leaned into the captain part of his name, John Bolton. The breaking news story on the third page of every newspaper was that he just released the United States official plan for dealing with Africa. Prosper Africa. Ah yes, Africa. The continent people forget exists until our president gets in trouble for calling some of its countries. Oh, and I can't say that word on YouTube. Clearly we have some work to do. So what's the plan, Bolton? Well, here's Fox News to rave about everything the president does like they always do. This initiative uh, enunciated by John Bolton, the president's national security advisor, it, it seems it couldn't have been more poorly timed or more poorly placed than Africa, for crying out loud. Yeah, it's poorly executed as well because it's unresourced. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Tell me what you really think. The key takeaway from Bolden's presentation is that we're going to be combating China's influence in the region. Which doesn't that just make Africa feel special? In a pretty big foreign policy 180 in the region, our new goal is just making sure that we're not the third wheel in China's courting of the region. China uses bribes, opaque agreements, and the strategic use of debt to hold states in Africa captive to Beijing's wishes and demands. And we plan to use bribes, opaque agreements, and the strategic use of debt to fix that. I mean, when a country that's branded itself America First comes out and says they want to help you, I'd recommend giving that contract a once over. So what's the plan? Well, right now it's lacking some specificity, for example, a budget or anything in writing, but this administration paints with broad strokes and fills in the details once they get sued. The proposal has three main ideas I'll break down. Cutting American aid in Africa, reducing America's troop presence in Africa, and increasing investment in Africa. Sounds like we're looking to get more involved. Hey, at least we'll save some money. So let's start with the first bullet point, optimizing aid. We will ensure that US taxpayer dollars for aid are used efficiently and effectively. The United States will no longer provide indiscriminate assistance across the entire continent without focus or prioritization. Well, that sounds uncontroversial. I mean, I know we all love government waste, but I guess in this case we'll have to cut back. Of course, it's not perfect because the success metric has been shifted from helping people to helping America, and some unnecessary spending to help people not starve isn't great. Unless they prefer to buy products made in the United States, which would help our bottom line. This isn't really the most controversial stance though, because most people would defend it by saying it's not our job. But it is one of those situations where it's no secret that American politicians are pretty good at lying. So why? Say we're committed to helping the African people and then cut aid. Administrations have been doing that for decades. Don't go out and say. Under our new approach, every decision we make, every policy we pursue, and every dollar of aid we spend will further U.S. priorities in the region. To put this in perspective, according to Bolton, each of the past two years we have spent more than $8 billion in aid, or just under one third of a border wall cost per year, and we'll be putting all of those line items under review. The logic is that this is not an American problem, it's an international problem. Speaking of which, the United States is going to reduce its participation in UN peacekeeping missions, which should help China. Wait, isn't our goal to lessen their influence in the region? Apparently the United States is going to bring peace to Africa by using our weapons exclusively to shoot ourselves in the foot. This pretty well transitions us to the second point of Prosper Africa lessening our troop presence in Africa. Our goal is for the nations of the region to take ownership over peace and security in their own neighborhood. Well, that requires a little bit of reading between the lines, but saying the United States wants to depend on local security forces to handle this stuff is a little like leaving a clogged toilet in the gas station bathroom because you're sure management will get around to it. It's designed to facilitate the United States military cutting 10% of its 72,000 forces deployed in Africa. Some of you might be wondering, whoa, 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 
when did we invade Africa? But we just kind of showed up and stayed there. Point is, the party's getting a little too expensive and drawn out, so we're going to start heading home. It might sound like I'm criticizing this move, but transitioning to a strategy of fighting to getting someone else to fight for you isn't exactly unpopular amongst, I think, any voting demographic. So I think if we can handle local security well enough that we can continue to almost completely ignore that entire continent while saving a little bit of money, it'll be considered mission success. The last point, and this is a big one, is spurring private investment in Africa. The last time Americans were excited about investing in Africa, there was this Nigerian prince who I lent a thousand dollars to. His checks in the mail. In this case though, we want African nations to succeed, flourish, and remain independent in fact and not just in theory. In the coming years and months, we also intend to pursue modern, comprehensive trade agreements on the continent that ensure fair and reciprocal exchange between the United, Nation, United States and the nations of Africa. This will largely come through the United States International Development Finance Corporation, or IDFC, which is also the sound of its budget breaking new grounds as we've doubled its budget this October to $60 billion. Now, you might be thinking, $60 billion to an agency I've never heard of? Well, it's been a fun ride, but now it's time to get my pitchfork and torch. But that's for investment, not just handing out money. Essentially, this is the part of foreign policy where we go, China, it's unfair that you give out those predatory loans to other countries. Stop copying us. If you look, China has been increasing their investment in the region pretty significantly to the point where, in 2016, they invested $40 billion in the continent. So entering this thing with $60 billion in hand isn't exactly bringing a knife to a gunfight. Problem is, despite our liberal gun laws, China's packing bigger heat with their government pledging to loan out $60 billion in Africa next year while our government's own $60 billion is our allowance for the whole world investment. So this really is a case of shut up and take my money foreign policy that would have 2006 investment bankers saying, whoa, 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 don't just loan out this money to anybody. So how does this align with trade? Well, our new economic initiatives in Africa will help support American jobs and expand market access for US exports while promoting sustainable growth in African countries. We will focus our economic efforts on act African governments that act with us as strategic partners. As opposed to the Chinese strategy of trading loans for natural resources and ports, it seems like we're employing a strategy of trading loans for the ability to sell our stuff in their country. They seem to import a lot of machinery and food, and let me tell you, I hope they like the taste of soybeans. Now if you think forcing markets to open is a new idea, it's pretty much been the history of Latin America since, well, since we added America to that part of the region's name. This will basically be a trade treaty negotiated between a small African country recently in debt to the United States and the United States. So this thing might be a little bit lopsided towards the country that has undergone and perfected the concept of industrial revolution. This whole strategy, in its simplest terms, seems to be the cheapest and least invasive way for us to maintain some control of a region we are in no way interested in. It's like the relative you never see but you like because every Christmas you get a check in the mail for $45. The only difference is that relative hasn't started to call in favors. To summarize, our new Africa strategy is less aid, fewer troops, more loans and more trade. A strategy we hate China for using, but if you can't beat them, join them. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to learn more about how a Chinese debt trap looks, I did a recent video about their investments in Malaysia that are turning some heads. Remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.